Welcome back to separations class. Up until now, we've been discussing distillation, which is a thermally driven phase creation separation technique. At its core, the ability to create a phase that has a different composition has enabled us to perform the separation because after all, separating a liquid is very easy to separate from a vapor. In today's class, we'll begin introducing the second of the three major separation techniques that we'll discuss in this class, which are absorption and stripping. So they're close enough that I refer to them as the same technique. And these are both mass transfer based in which you add a phase instead of create a phase and then rely on mass transfer to perform the separation. The main ideas of absorption and stripping processes are as follows. Just like distillation, we'll be beginning with a single phase binary mixture that we wish to separate from each other. Unlike distillation though, we're not seeking pure both components. In absorption stripping, typically we're interested in purifying one of the components and removing uh, the second component from that stream, either for the purposes of purification or uh, release back into the environment if we're talking about a wastewater stream or a, a waste gas stream. The second step of absorption and stripping is we add a third component that is of a second phase. And some examples of a third component of a different phase would be if we're talking about wastewater, then air would be the third component that could be a gas. Or if we're talking about a waste gas stream with an impurity in it, this could be a solvent that has a particular affinity for that impurity. A third component of a second phase or in a second phase, we'll say. Then this adding of the third component in the second phase will inspire one of the components in the original mixture to transfer over into that phase. And as a simplifying assumption to start, we're going to assume that the other component does not transfer phase. So let's say that we had water, for example, in uh, the original mixture with an impurity in it. We would say only the impurity transfers over to the gas phase. You would say, simplify the assumption by saying that water does not vaporize. That may not be true all the time. So a li little bit later on, we might uh, explore that assumption in a little bit more detail. And the final step is that the phases, again, just like in distillation, will naturally separate. Uh, if I have uh, a, a pipe or something that leads the vapor out, the vapor is going to float away and the liquid is going to want to fall away from the liquid. So we can uh, separate things like that. Next, let's talk about what a process flow diagram would look like for a single stage absorption or stripping. Oh, but first I haven't... Uh, distinguished between the two processes, absorption and stripping. As I mentioned, they're very similar. They're just um, almost the exact opposite, right? So absorption is when you remove a component from the gas phase. So that would be, um, for example, scrubbing is another name for an absorption process where you would have a hazardous impurity in a gas stream. And before you send it to the environment, you wanna remove that impurity. So if purification of the gas phase is your goal and you're going to do that with a liquid solvent, that is absorption while stripping is about removing a component from the liquid phase. So you could talk about stripping uh, an impurity from a liquid, from a, a water stream, for example. So the process flow diagram, this is for a single stage, like I mentioned. Um, it will have four streams coming in or out. I have a liquid stream flowing in, a liquid stream flowing out, and similarly a vapor stream flowing in and a vapor stream flowing out. So in this diagram, L and V refer to flow rates of the liquid and the vapor respectively. While Y and X refer to the composition of the solute, that will be the thing that is transferring phases in the bulk phase. As I mentioned before, a key assumption that we'll make to start out is that liquid does not vaporize and vapor does not condense. The bulk of those phases do not change. And if we can further assume that the solute is dilute, then this can allow us to simplify the analysis greatly. So if the solute is dilute and the liquid is not vaporizing and the vapor is not condensing, then the bulk flow rates of liquid are going to be the same. L in is equal to L out and V in is equal to V out. And we can simply write these, these should all be flow rates by the way with dots. Uh, we can simply write these as L and V. And our material balance then would be uh, L times X in 
plus V times Y in is equal to L times X out plus V times Y out. And this is the one half of the equation that we'll need to analyze. This is our material balance. As you can probably guess by now, the other half of this analysis is going to be an equilibrium relationship. And that will be the subject of the next video. So I'll see you there.